This scene will be interesting. Emily is experimenting with uh, life. Hello, my name is Abel Korzeniowski uh, and I am a film composer. You may know my work from uh, A Single Man, Nocturnal Animals, Penny Dreadful or Till. And today I want to talk to you about Emily. It's a beautiful uh, biopic based on the life of Emily Bronte, the author of Wuthering Heights. The first cue I would like to talk about, Emily makes a decision to become the teacher, which is something that she, she fears, basically against every fiber in her, in her body. As you see, there are, there are a couple of stages. At first we have this strange uh, accelerated footage of, of Emily's regular life, uh, where she basically tries to participate in what society expects of her. And at the same time, uh, there is anxiety which which is expressed by those highest uh, violin notes. Uh, it's, it's not a, le a regular cluster, which uh, I didn't want this moment to, to be as dissonant as for a, for a horror movie. But nonetheless, these are single, uh, a few single violins playing notes which are going a little out of tune. So this is this. Plus the organ in the background. So this is at the same time a little cheerful. She hopes she will succeed but it will not be so. In the next section, there is still excitement that this is a new chapter, perhaps, that maybe she will succeed. We have a harpsichord coming in, which kind of brings the rigidity of the of the of her surroundings so how how oppressive to her everything is music goes bolder and bolder again in the same style so everything is very very strict and finally she fails that dissonant violins come back with the organ. And finally, she comes back to her father. And this is disappointment. The cue is is very simple. This is how how I try to write to <clears throat> to have all the elements as as characteristic as possible. Uh, very often, I I find out that I don't really need a lot if I have two strong elements, a very characteristic background, and a melody on top of it. Very often, this is. This is enough, and, and w w what I really have to do is to add something here and there. Uh, if, you, if you look at, at, at my screen, there's a lot of muted parts. So these were moments where I tried to add something more. For example, at the very beginning, I tried to add some piano notes.
it didn't work. I tried to do this kind of clock ticking. But as much as I, I loved the idea at the beginning, uh, eventually I thought maybe it's too much on the nose and, you know, we, uh, we don't want this music at this point to work as a commentary. We w want it just to uh, create this kind of bittersweet sweet, uh, mood, which we don't want to sell yet in, in which direction it will go. Once we start the main theme, it's only three instruments. It's still the organ, it's just single notes on the piano, and it's the, the violins. So it's, it's really simple. I considered maybe adding timpani. It turned out a little too dramatic, so again, decided against it. And even in this part, this is only, again, only three lines only violins, second second part of, of violins. Actually, they're playing octaves and just the harpsichord. And something new comes here with the violas. But it's still only four instruments at once. Yes, and, and here again, I considered some piano, perhaps. But eventually, I wanted to hold off with, with the piano until the very last moment to have this stronger shift at the end. This scene will be interesting. Emily is experimenting with uh, life in a very uh, <laughs> uh, broad definition, and uh, this includes uh, trying morphine with her brother. Uh, the scene has three different different stages. Uh, in the first one, we have this strong bed of uh, strings church organ and on top of that very aggressive bouncing with with solo violin this is the hold on i'm gonna solo so it's almost like a pizzicato done with a bow It's supposed to be almost like your synapses in your brain being triggered by uh, all the new impulses and uh, the the new experience. So, so this is this superposition of those two elements, and then uh, we transition. We switch into a very romantic mood. or technically very neo-romantic. The time of the queue is really free-flowing.
and finally back to the to the element of the church, right? So, so she's she starts from this ca uh, cathedral uh, kind of uh, grounder, and we come back to reality when when she's sober again. And I would like to uh, talk to you a, a little bit about about the organ in this score. This was the the only element that was actually uh, used from from samples. But the problem with recording organ in uh, in real life uh, for a feature film is that it's a logistical nightmare because first you uh, need to scout the the church to find a good instrument with the right beautiful sound, which is in itself uh, a, a difficult task, especially if you record this in a, in a different city than not where, where you live. And then the second, that recording this in this new venue is a whole, a full process of recording. So if you, if you do only two, three days with the orchestra, uh, having a whole new day to record just the organ is just uh, impossible. So what we uh, what we did was we used the, the sound of samples and and then we reamped them. This is this is basically a process when you play everything back in the very room. Where you, uh, where we recorded the the orchestra. Luckily for us, uh, this was a beautiful concert hall, and it was equipped with huge speakers, a huge speaker system specifically designed for for this concert room. The sound inside was unbelievable. Uh, it was like uh, it was like being in a church basically again and uh, this was because the way uh, organ sounds is that it uses the venue it's in as a kind of resonant body having uh, this sound in the same room as the orchestra and being able to uh, record it with all of our mics uh, created a, a great op opportunity to to have a sound that would would match uh, perfectly the rest of our our recording, it's sometimes it, it's hard to explain why why the sound is uh, so different. Uh, mostly, it's because when you record samples, you you do it one note at a time. The room responds in a very different way when you actually play a chord when you play a, a, a white chord and when you play a series of them, the room becomes oversaturated with sound. And that, that's why a, a recording of real church organ, when someone plays a, a complete piece, is very different than reassembling it from, from single notes. This is the origin it's the same samples, but in the in the first case, it will be what we have in, in our DAW. And later, how the same samples sound when actually put through a speaker system and then recorded with all the mics uh, you have uh, in the same room with the orchestra. So this is just the organ. And now back it's 
it's surprising, right? It, you, you, you can uh, hear that somehow there's more uh, detail. Uh, it comes from the speaker system. Uh, there's also uh, a, a much deeper bass, which comes from accumulation of sound in the, in the room. It's the same principle as when you have a grand casa, the bass drum, orchestra bass drum. It needs a huge space to really sound good. If you record, record it in a small room, it will not be really this. When you're on the scoring stage, uh, this is where Grand Casa actually gets its, its sound. It's not a dry sound. It comes from the room and the same principle with the organ. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for stopping by and visiting me in my studio. I hope you found some of these tips on how to write uh, useful in your own work. And uh, remember that you can find more uh, content like this on Speedfire Audio Academy. Enjoy. <laughs>